I'm Danny. This is Torin, and we're turning a lifeboat into a liveaboard. In the last episode, we started filling the holes in the hull and ferrying them in. And that was a project that continued into this episode and probably the next one and maybe even the one after that. It was a long journey last summer. Here you can see the holes that we'd already filled and fared and part of the hull where I'd already sanded. In order to make sure that we sanded all of the bottom, especially where it was a little bit harder to see where you had gone over or not, we drew these big uh, looping lines all over the hull with Sharpie, and then my job was to go along behind and make sure that all the Sharpie was gone. The idea being that if there's no Sharpie left, you've probably taken off that whole layer of paint. This ended up being my summer project, and I'd often go up in the evenings when Torn was at work and take a good audiobook with me to listen to while I sanded. It only made it marginally less boring, though, I have to say. In the meantime, Torin continued his seemingly endless project of removing bits and pieces of hardware from the boat, and then sanding and filling the holes that were left behind. Here he's removing, or has removed, what was kind of a large metal button on the bow, and that was used as part of the system which hung it from the ferry. And of course, more sanding so that we could do more fairing, and eventually, painting. My appetite for sanding on any given day is, like yours, I'm sure, somewhat limited. So while we were doing this, we also mixed in some other projects, namely the walkway. So today we're going to work on taking all of the black rubber off so that we can build out a slightly bigger walkway so that when we go through the locks, I don't fall off and die, basically. And also, some of it not in the best condition and also leaks a bit, so we will undo this and then sister some wood onto this fiberglass in the end so that we have a set of beer walkway. These boats are blessed with many things, but an abundance of exterior space is not really one of them. And so we realized pretty quickly that if I was going to stay on the boat every time we docked or went through a lock, we would need to add a walkway. Like I just said, our plan was to take the rubber off and then sister something around the outside. At this point, we thought it was going to be wood, but we very quickly realized that that plan wasn't going to work. In the meantime, step one was to get rid of the rubber, which was bolted on by seemingly a million bolts. What we quickly discovered were that these boats are built a bit like a multi-layered cake. This long bolt, for example, is just holding the black rubber channel on. When you take the channel off, then you come to the two halves of the hull, which were also just bolted together. Unfortunately, not with very good stainless. <laughs> Probably didn't want to see that uh, bolt is holding it together. That's freaking nasty and rusted. Unfortunately, there was quite a lot of rust all over the place here, and for every bolt that we couldn't just undo with the wrench, Torrin had to cut them out with the angle grinder. Here he's using a damp cloth to cool it off, and you can see that satisfying puff of steam every time he touches it. Once we'd undone the bolts, we were able to pull off the rubber. This was surprisingly heavy and hard to maneuver, and also kind of gross and rusty and greasy, but it was really satisfying to pull it off. I mentioned that we originally thought the deck would be made out of wood, which we would then encapsulate with fiberglass, but we realized pretty quickly that that wasn't the safest idea. We weren't worried about it falling off the boat or anything like that, rather that if we were rolling around in any sort of sea, which let's face it, this boat's going to be a bit rolly, we didn't want those side decks to act like big scoops, going down in the water and then having a hard time shedding off any liquid as we rolled around. So we turned our idea to something that would be very quick to drain. And while I'm skipping ahead a little bit in terms of time, I'm going to show you the solution we eventually came up with. 
I'm not going to show you the whole installation process here because you'll see that later, but what Torin's doing is testing out a sample of fiberglass grating, which we got from a company called Fiberman, and eventually turned into our deck. Depending on your marina, your docks might actually be made out of this. In our case, it's one inch by one inch holes with a very aggressive non-skid on top. Here's a better view of the non-skid and a glimpse of the mess that was our hull at this time. We also discovered something interesting during this test fit, which was that the hull joint where the two pieces of the boat attach was actually angled at quite a jaunty angle towards the water. It was enough that you would have very much felt like you were going to fall overboard if you walked on it the way it was. So we decided to take some old strips of fiberglass, taken out of various bits and pieces we'd cut out of the boat, and layer it up to make sort of a new platform for the deck to stand on. You'll have to stay tuned to see how that worked out for us. And of course, we needed to make sure it would hold up to our weight. So here Torin's testing it to see how much the whole situation was flexing. And the final decision was how wide to make it. We tried to calculate a good balance between being able to walk along it and growing out of any slip width-wise. And that's where I'm going to leave you in terms of this project. Like I said, you'll see it again. Since we were making slow but steady progress on filling in those big gaping holes in the sides, we quickly realized that we needed a place to actually get, you know, in and out of the boat. And so we decided to make a back door. Now, when we were in the yard for the first three or four months, the boat beside us was an aluminum boat owned by a super nice guy called John. He was also building it from the hull up, though I think his hull was a little bit more finished than ours. But towards the end of his stay, he started offering us all sorts of interesting bits and bobs that he'd collected over the course of his build. Things that he didn't have a use for, but he thought we might be able to use before he went and sold them somewhere else. And the day that we realized that we really needed a door and quick because we were proverbially painting ourselves into a corner and were no longer going to be getting in and out of the boat anytime soon, John wandered over and asked us if we needed an aluminum door. And yes, of course, we did. The funny thing was, just like Luya, this door is kind of perfect for one person and one person only. I mean, it's really small and I cannot imagine where it actually would have fit. But for us, it was actually made to measure. The installation caused Torin to ask the question he's probably asked more than any other over the past year and a half. How can I do this? In case you missed it, that was a big sigh and a how can I do this? I don't think you can overestimate the number of hours that Torin has thought about this project in the last year and a half. Cut in here. We have to cut it out anyways. When we bought Luya, she came with three opening hatches. Unfortunately, all of them were broken and quite beyond repair, but Torrin's cutting one of them out here, which we will replace with the door. Of course, she didn't need a door before because they used the big sides, but now that we've turned those into windows and walls, we'll need a much more normal door. So you can see the gap there where the hatch was, and we've cut that out and we've drawn on where the frame will be. And now I'm applying Sikaflex, which we're about to use to attach the wooden frame. And then once the frame was in place, we were able to use that as a guide to cut the rest of the fiberglass out, leaving us a hole that was hopefully the correct size for our door.
Back on the ground, we had to work on getting the door ready to be installed. So here Torin's measuring where the hinges are going to go. We just picked up some small hinges from the chandlery near the boat and we've used those for now. They're working really well, but this door, as you can see, needs some cleanup before the final installation is complete. For example, the hole there for the door handle, because we need to install the door on the right hand side hinges the way that it fit, we had to flip it upside down. So at some point we'll need to fill that in and then cut a new hole for our door handle. We also need to square off the bottom, put in some weather stripping, paint it to match the rest of the boat. And actually we're going to install an opening hatch in the door as well just to get some more light and airflow. But for now it's working really well and so Torin's installing these sort of semi-temporary hinges which you will see in a second. And of course, there would be a little hiccup to get past before we could get that door into the boat. Oof, we are like on the edge of the beam. What does that mean? Um, well, it means that I might grind out a tiny bit of the little bit of the beam so that the nut will fit in there. But it should work. Okay. It's not in the middle. In the end, it took just a few small adjustments and we were good to go. But of course, what's a project on Luya without some sanding? So here Torin is cleaning up the edges a little bit. You can see some of it's a bit scratched up. That was from before we got the door, but he's just taking it out so that it's not cutting anybody's fingers when you get in and out of the boat. And then he went along and cleaned up any burrs from where we drilled out the holes for the bolts. So the little scraps of metal left over from the drill bit coming through, he was also taking out so that, again, we're not cutting ourselves as we go past. And then just our luck, we ended up with a little bit of a conflict between where the bolts from the hinges were and the side of the boat. So Torn drilled out some little holes so that they could nest in. And with that, we were ready to test the door. And here it is successfully closing for the very first time. And that's going to close the door on this episode as well. Thank you so much to everybody for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you haven't done so, please do. And of course, a huge thank you to our Patreons. They give us such a boost of confidence, and it's really great to be building a community of other Luya fans. If you'd like behind-the-scenes information and up-to-date um, notifications about what we're doing, that is a great place to start. We will be back in a couple of weeks with our next episode, and have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.